China has unveiled the world's first AI military commander. You heard that right. It's not a soldier, it's a commander. But what do they want to use it for? And is humankind ready to have non-human entities to lead and plan warfare activities? There are so many probing questions that demand to be answered. In today's exploration, I'm going to tell you everything we know about this robot, and then we'll move on to its implications. So, let's dive in. Around two weeks ago, news popped that in China, a country where AI is strictly prohibited from commanding the armed forces, scientists have built a virtual commander. This AI, caged in the confines of a lab at the Joint Operations College of the National Defense University in Shijiazhong, Hebei province, mimics human commanders in every way, from their experience and thought patterns to their personalities and even their flaws. Inside massive computer war games involving all branches of the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, this AI commander takes the reins with unprecedented authority, rapidly learning and evolving in these endlessly shifting virtual battles. The project was publicly unveiled in May in a paper published in the Chinese language journal Common Control and Simulation. Led by senior engineer Jia Shenqing, the team argues that while AI in military applications comes with its risks, their project offers a viable way to tackle these challenges. In China, the military operates under a strict rule. The party commands the gun. And at the moment, only the Central Military Commission of the Communist Party of China can mobilize the PLA. The Chinese researchers believe that since AI technology shows promise in capable decision-making, forward-deployed units like drones and robotic dogs can be given more autonomy and the power to fire. They also emphasize that back at headquarters, humans still hold the command authority. The PLA has several operational plans for potential conflicts in areas like Taiwan and the South China Sea. Scientists are tasked with testing these plans in simulations to weigh the good with the bad and gain insight into the chaos of battle. But again, what makes it better than a human commander? The researchers involved in this project argue that campaign-level military simulations usually need human commanders to make quick decisions in response to unexpected events. But there aren't enough senior PLA commanders available to participate in a lot of these war simulations. They have also talked about the fact that their current joint operations simulation system suffers from poor simulation results due to the lack of command entities at the joint battle level. Now, this gives us a breather that the might of the Chinese strategic decision-making is still under human control and will remain in human control for a long time. This commander is just a game need that the Chinese tried to fill by using artificial intelligence. This AI commander is basically a filler that replaces human commanders when they can't join a large-scale virtual battle or exercise command authority. In the lab, this AI can freely exercise its power without any human interference. The study highlights that this AI commander is the sole core decision-making entity for the overall operation, with high-end decision-making responsibilities and authorities. The biggest highlight of this study is that the commander has the most advanced role for AI in military research that's been publicly reported so far. For example, the AI used by the US Army only acts as a commander's virtual staff, offering decision support. The AI pilots of the US Air Force only help with frontline training, but don't get involved in war room operations. Different senior PLA commanders have different combat styles. General Peng Dihuai, for instance, threw the US forces off balance with unexpected swift strikes and infiltrations during the Korean War. Similar to US General George Patton, Peng believed in taking risks for victory. But on the other hand, General Lin Biao, who was famous for his victories over the Japanese and Kuomintang armies, avoided risk and made meticulous decisions like Britain's Field Marshal Bernard Law Montgomery. The research team initially programmed the AI commander to think like a seasoned strategist by combining different such approaches. At the moment, the AI commander is calm, sharp, and quick to devise practical plans for recalling similar situations from memory. This version doesn't make impulsive decisions, it's all about analysis and poise, but its functionality can be fine-tuned if deemed necessary. Now let's discuss how this could actually be a better alternative to having a human military leader.
First of all, humans often buckle under intense pressure, struggling to make fully rational decisions on tight deadlines. Instead of purely analyzing data, the AI commander relies more on practical experience for combat decisions. It quickly recalls similar scenarios and formulates a plan based on what worked before. Humans also forget things, and the scientists wanted to simulate this too. They've limited the size of the AI commander's memory. When it reaches capacity, it dumps some knowledge units. This AI allows the PLA to run countless human-out-of-the-loop war scenarios. It spots new threats, crafts plans, and makes the best decisions when battles start going sideways or without human intervention. It learns from both victories and defeats, making it highly efficient and perfect for repeated testing. More importantly, why I believe having an AI at the helm of military affairs is a good idea is because humans have human needs. Driven by those needs, we have witnessed many military coups around the world which have done more damage to the world than making it a better place. The chances of an AI planning a coup are far less than a human, but if it does so, I think we'll be in all sorts of trouble. However, this remains a discussion for another day when a nation announces AI as the official leader of its military. Globally, the race in AI military applications is heating up, with China and the US at the forefront. While Beijing and Washington push to lead in this crucial area, they're also worried about AI's potential threats to human security. Senior officials from China, the US, and Russia have been negotiating to set up regulations to mitigate the risks of AI in the military, including banning AI from controlling nuclear weapons. Handing military power to AI has a mix of perks and pitfalls we need to talk about. On the plus side, AI can analyze tons of data in real time, making quick decisions without the fatigue or emotional swings human commanders deal with. This means more consistent decision making. But here's the catch. AI could react aggressively to perceived threats, potentially escalating conflicts that human commanders might manage more carefully. Plus, AI decisions are only as good as the data they're based on, so any bad data can lead to poor outcomes. And let's not forget about cybersecurity. AI systems are prime targets for hacks. There's also a big question about oversight and accountability. If we lean too heavily on AI, human commanders might lose their say in critical moments, and figuring out who's responsible for AI's mistakes could get really messy. While AI can learn and improve over time, it needs to be monitored to stay aligned with ethical standards. Ethically, AI must follow moral guidelines, respect combat rules, and protect non-combatants. We need to decide how much control humans keep over AI actions to avoid unchecked decisions. Accountability is key, so AI actions must be traceable and understandable. Bias is another concern. AI can inherit and amplify human biases, so continuous updates are crucial. Lastly, global cooperation and regulations are necessary to ensure AI in military contexts is used responsibly and doesn't pose new threats. The key question that needs to be answered here only constitutes three words. Are we ready? I've made another video discussing a $100 billion joint venture of OpenAI and Microsoft. It's popping on your screens, click now and I'll catch you there in a sec.